Welcome to our latest Wandering Walks of Wonder adventure. Today we're headed to the historic Missouri River town of Herman, Missouri. It's widely believed that the Herman area resembled the Rhine Valley of Germany caught the attention of scouts from the German Settlement Society of Philadelphia, leading to its selection as a colony site on the American frontier. Concerned by the rapid assimilation of their compatriots into American culture, the Philadelphia Germans envisioned a new city that would retain its German identity in the far west. In 1837, George Baer, a schoolteacher, journeyed to Missouri as the society's agent and acquired 11,000 acres of the most rugged terrain along the Missouri River, although picturesque for the colony site. Meanwhile, Philadelphia city planners, ignorant of the actual landscape, designed Herman on paper as a flat city with broad squares and boulevards, unaware of the rugged reality. As we go through our walking tour of Herman, we'll see some pretty historic buildings, one of those being the Fest Hall. This building is owned by Jim and Mary Dyerberg and is part of the Hermanhof Winery Complex. Today it's used for receptions, parties, and festival events. But it began back in the building began back in the 1870s when Otto Manning purchased this building here and relocated his hardware and cutlery, cutlery store to this site. Over time he expanded his inventory and added a full line of clothing, toys, and groceries. His son-in-law, Gustav Etmuller, opened a drugstore and post office in the building. On July 29, 1886, the original building was destroyed in a fire. But the damage was repaired and the store reopened for business by Thanksgiving of that year. Across the street from the Fest Hall is the four-and-a-half-story Star Mill Building. It was built in 1867 for about $40,000. It was co-owned by Matthias Kokel and Henry Rittmeyer, one of the wealthiest merchants in town. The Star Mill was the first steam-powered grist mill in Herman. The initial 17 settlers that dis disembarked here at Herman encountered what one writer described as a wilderness area. Their idealism waned as they realized the vertical challenges of their purchase lot. Nevertheless, they persisted, showcasing German resolve and hard work. Adapting to their surroundings, the Germans planted vineyards on the rocky slopes, leveraging the wild grapevines. Within a decade, Herman hosted its first wine fest, attracting St. Louis visitors to enjoy, enjoy Catawaba, I hope I say that right, Catawaba wine amidst grapevine-laden hills. By the 1900s, Herman's winemakers flourished with Stonehill Winery becoming the nation's second largest, earning accolades at global competitions. The town's vintners collectively produced 3 million gallons of wine annually. During its heyday, Herman thrived as a bustling river port adorned with taverns and the region's largest general store. But the town's prosperity waned due to anti-German uh, uh, sentiments fueled by World War I and the Volstead Act of 1919. Prohibition precipitated Herman's economic downturn, though it inadvertently preserved the historical character of this town. Today, Herman's nostalgic allure draws visitors seeking the serenity of yesteryears. Its downtown is a designated historic district and boasts 1800 brick, 1800 style brick homes that are in the traditional German style. There's about 150 buildings here in downtown Herman that are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Herman's wineries also have reignited the region as a premier de tourist destination, and those wineries still contribute significantly to Missouri's wine production output. John Fotch and Philip Kuhn, in partnership, erected the concert hall in the spring and early summer of 1878. John came from an early Herman family, immigrating with his mother in 1847. 
Philip Kuhn was in his early 20s when the hall was built, but had experience running a saloon and restaurant near the railroad depot for many years. Together, they visited St. Louis during the winter to get ideas as to what sort of building their new hall should be. In March of 1878, they began its construction, employing St. Louis contractors for the lumber and iron work. One year after completion, the able artist Henry German Sr. painted the concert hall sign, very likely the sign that's visible today on the facade of the building. The saloon with concert hall above became a focus of activity in the community with numerous plays, lectures, singing events, balls, and much more given in the spacious hall. The saloon, one of the largest and finest west of St. Louis, quickly acquired a preeminent reputation, serving as a host to the growing number of St. Louis holiday excursion terrain, trains. In the summer of 1881, Lonis Ross, a local builder, constructed a bowling alley as a one-story uh, portion at the rear of the building. In the spring of 1886, Fosch and Kuhn erected a summer garden where outside band concerts were a regular feature on an adjacent lot with four covered pavilions and a wooden fence. We've walked by several buildings here in the downtown area of Herman. One of the more historic streets with buildings is 3rd Street here. This is a great example of some of the uh, what Herman looked like back in the early 18 to mid 1800s. Most of these uh, houses were erected at that time. The early Germans built their houses close to the sidewalks to make more room for their backyard gardens. That's why you see them so close here to the street, but the backyards are a little bit more expansive.
Ahead of us is the Gasconade County Historical Society Archives. This is the former for Farmers and Merchants Bank building that was constructed in 1909 by the same man who built, built the current Heritage Real Estate and Insurance Building on the corner of First and Shiler Streets. It's staffed today by trained personnel with archives and a one-stop research facility for those looking for information about Herman. Across the street from the Historical Society is the uh, Herman Historical Museum that's actually located in an old German school. Constructed in 1871, this building was Herman's elementary school where for many years only German was spoken. The building was erected with large classrooms to accommodate meetings of local organizations. The clock tower, which can be seen from many parts of town, was added in 1890. The building remained a schoolhouse for 84 years. In 1955, it was deeded to Historic Herman, which restored the building and made it into a fully appointed museum with, a, with an extensive, extensive collection of artifacts from Herman. Ahead of us is the Showboat Theater. Construction on the Showboat Theater began in 1834 by Charlie Bonstark. There was a contest to name the new theater. Out of 175 entries, a seven-year-old boy won. We're fortunate to have here in Herman this active theater group that performs musical dramas and comedies to entertain residents and visitors throughout the year.
We're now walking past Herman Vet- uh, Herman's Veterans Memorial Park. This stop is dedicated to all who have or will serve in the armed services. It's dedicated to the brave men and women who have fought for our country, past, present, and future. Yeah, I have to prove that I'm walking. <laughs> no. <laughs> but don't let me break your spot. Yeah. The homes that we see in front of us are part of Dutchheim State Historical Site. This state historic site is the official German heritage site of the Missouri Division of State Parks and Historic Sites. These buildings that we see were constructed in the mid-1800s. There are tours given of the building as well as exhibits on furniture, tools, garden life, and what life was just like in early day Hermann. This building that we see in front of us was constructed in 1906 and was once the fire department here in Herman. Today it's part of the visitor center information as well as still a city hall. We're now walking through Herman Plotz, which is home to his statue of Arminius. This statue honors the town's namesake that was uh, built in 19, or 2009. 
In the year 9 AD, Arminius, now known as Hermann, led an army of northern Europeans which annihilated three Roman legions at the Battle of uh, Teutoburg Forest, a victory, a victory historians say that changed the course of European history. Across the street from us and up on the hill is the Gasconade County Courthouse. This magnificent building is the only courthouse in Missouri and one of the few in the United States that was built with private funds. Charles Eitzine, a wealthy merchant and one of Herman's original settlers, donated $50,000 to build the courthouse. He also helped fund many other projects in town including the Herman City Park as well as the German school that we saw earlier. The large building that we see here on our left uh, that's now the Fern Wee Fern Wah Distilling Company uh, was a building that was constructed in 1867 by Constance and August Reich as the St. Charles, Wine, Charles Wine Hall. The brothers purchased Lot 10 from the Hans Weinsprecher estate and sold their interest in the music hall on East 2nd Street to proceed with plans for a more modern saloon and hall at this prime location right next to the railroad lines. The building was constructed as a saloon, but also had a billiard parlor as well as a restaurant. 
It served as Herman's uh, first high school from 1898 to 1923. On our way, as we enjoy the riverfront on our left, there are some buildings that we see here. Uh, there were the former Limer Hotel, which is now part of Orr Street Inn, and Eitzing Townhouse. Eitzing built his home so it overlooked the wharf and Missouri River where he made his fortune. The river has played an important part in Herman's history and development. There were names of uh, some of the buildings from riverboat captains who lived here. It uh, was an important part of the commerce and a major stopping point for those who were traveling along the Missouri River. The last stop on our tour here in Herman is the White House Hotel. The White House Hotel was built by the Ripstein family in 1869. As administrator of the Ripstein estate, Eitzin managed the hotel in its later years. Many dignitaries stayed here during the well-known German Day celebrations, including William Jennings Bryan, who was a noted orator as well as presidential candidate in 1896, 1900, and 1908. A, gres a guest register signed by baseball great Ty Cobb is also displayed inside the hotel small museum. The White House Hotel is the only one of Herman's early hotels that has remained in its original condition. It, the hotel has been meticulously restored and today is open for tours if you care to tour inside. I hope you've enjoyed this Wandering Walks of Tour here in downtown historic Herman, Missouri. Uh, if you've visited Herman before, leave a comment on what your experiences were like. Also, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you on our next Wandering Walks of Wonder Walking Tour. Take care now. Bye-bye.